Hey guys, I'm Aaron and this is SketchUp Square One where we take a look at the fundamentals of SketchUp. Today, one of the things that makes SketchUp SketchUp, we're going to take a look at inferencing. Specifically, we're going to look at using inferencing to draw lines. Let's hop in. Okay, so we use this term inferencing to talk about how SketchUp will kind of guess what you're trying to do. So specifically what I want to look at today is inferencing while drawing lines. Inferencing is something you use with pretty much any command you start using in SketchUp, but we're going to look at it as it relates to drawing lines. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the line tool, and I'm going to come over here and start drawing a line. I'm going to pick a point, just a point out here in the open. I'm just going to click on a point. So now as I move my mouse around, that black line follows my cursor. You'll notice that as I move it around, occasionally it'll jump and change color. This is basic axis inferencing. I'm just, I'm, I'm quiet there, so let you guys sink in for a sec. So what this is saying is as you move your cursor around to the point where your line is parallel to one of the three axes, it's going to turn that color and snap to parallel to that line. You'll see this, it looks like it's not parallel, but this is, this is the perspective view where as we fade off into the distance, things will get closer together as they go towards infinity. But uh, you'll see that that is, green line is, is parallel to the green axis, blue axis, and red axis. So anytime you're drawing, anywhere at all, it's going to snap to that axis in the context you're in. We've already talked about using the axis tool to change the orientation of the axis. We've talked about groups and components that have their own axis inside of them. Um, this snap is always relative to whatever axis you're currently working with. That means if you're inside of a group and you change the direction of the axis, this snap is going to be relative to that changed axis. If I want to force my line to stay on one of these axes, I can use the arrow keys on the keyboard. So if I come in here and I hit the right arrow key on the keyboard, I'm now constrained to the red axis. So no matter what I, no matter where I click, what I do, this will always stay on that red axis. If I hit the left arrow key on the keyboard, now I'm constrained to green. Up arrow key on the keyboard, now I'm constrained to vertical. So how does this how does this help me? I mean, it was easy enough for me to click a point and then just hover to snap. Well, here here's here's what here's the thing. So I'm going to move pan over here. I have just a cube drawn. This is just some raw geometry. You can see it's not on axis. It's it's at some angle. Um, so here's the thing that, that this will let me do. So if I'm drawing a line over here. Um, it's going to start snapping me to this point. This is another piece of inferencing is point snap. So as I come over here, I'm going along the red axis, going along the red axis, but as soon as I get close to this point, oh, it jumps over to it. So what happens if I want to stay on the red axis but get to, to near that point? Well, if I hit the, the right arrow key, this is going to get me as close as I can to that point, but stay on the red axis. There's so many times as you're drawing, you're going to want to do this. I want to stay straight but I want to get to where this would be. Maybe, I, I don't know what the case I'm drawing. I'm, I'm trying to draw something like that where I'm connecting to it from a specific point. Um, and that those arrow keys will let you do that. The other thing, I'm going to hit undo a couple times to get rid of that. The other thing you can do is as you start drawing, so say I'm on the red axis and for whatever reason, I don't want to hit the arrow key, I can actually hold down the shift key. Shift key will keep you on whatever line you're currently on. So this is nice. This is okay for red axis or green axis because I can hold down shift and uh, get that to stay. But where it's more useful is say this line right here. Say I want to continue this line out. What I can do is click one point on the line, start moving on another part of the line and hold down the shift key. Sorry, it's not showing up my key logger, but I'm holding down shift right now. You can see as I move my cursor, it's constrained to that. I do have to hold down shift though. As soon as I release shift, it's going to let go. Okay, something else you may have seen right there was what we call the magenta snap. So anytime you move along an existing line, this works for faces too. Right now we're going to focus on uh, just lines. But as I move along this line, I get this 
parallel snap, this magenta. Again, I can hold down shift to constrain that. I can also hit the down arrow key on the keyboard. So if I hit down arrow, it will lock parallel to that line I'm inferencing. If I hit the down arrow a second time, it will lock to perpendicular to that line. Down a third time will release that, uh, that inference. Now let's say I wanna draw a line uh, somewhere on this cube, but parallel to the bottom line. What I would do is I'd pick the point I want to start from, come hover over the bottom line, and then move my cursor up to parallel. See there, there we go. Um, hitting the down arrow is going to lock that parallel. So now I can move around a lot easier. One of the, the, the concerns with inferencing is if you don't have an inference locked, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. So I'm, I'm here. If you pick up another point, then you might actually inference that. So now I'm inferencing perpendicular to that end rather than parallel to the bottom. So you do have to be conscious and that is where you might want to hold down the shift key to inference or lean on that, uh, that arrow key. One of the things you may find is perpendicular to a line is open to interpretation. So if I look at this line, uh, saying that I want a line perpendicular to it. Well, there's actually 360 degrees around that line that would be at 90 degrees to the surface of the line, the length of the line. So uh, it does its best to find a plane and give you a perpendicular snap to it, but uh, I'm not always going to get the perpendicular in the direction I'm hoping for. Uh, I've, I've had several occasions where, well, I want it to come out this way, but it's coming out this way, that sort of thing. So you might have to play with that a little bit, but uh, it is pretty nice, especially if you're drawing in 2D. If I'm drawing on a flat plane, it's real easy to figure out what perpendicular is, but you may have to click around a couple times if you're to get the perfect perpendicular for that snap. The last thing, of course, is point inferencing, and this is very simple. This is where, so if I move towards an endpoint, see how it jumps onto it? A dot like that, see if I get a little dot, that tells me I'm on an endpoint. If I hover for a second, it tells me I'm on an endpoint too. A green dot is an endpoint. If I come towards the middle of a line, I get this little pale blue, I don't know, cyan dot, and that's a midpoint snap. You can see that there. If I hover over a surface, I get on face snap. That gives me that little diamond. See that diamond right there? That tells me if I click right now, I'm on surface. This, this, is, this is very important because I can do things like, well, I can draw a line out this direction. See, I'm actually moving away from the face, but my cursor is over the face, but I'm not connected to it right now because I don't have that, that dot. If I click right here, now I'm back to hovering. This is the kind of inferencing, what I'm seeing right here, this is the inferencing that makes it possible to draw in 3D. A lot of other programs, well not a lot of other programs, but there are other programs that draw in 3D by showing you one face, two face, three faces, and you work in plane. One of the nice things about SketchUp is because of that inferencing, where you're snapping around and it's telling you where it's going to snap, that you can work in 3D in a single view like this. Keep an eye on those, those uh, lines that you see, so, so the little dots, the line colors, that sort of stuff is extremely important uh, as you move through here. I did mention this, on edge will give you that square. So square says I'm on an edge, diamond says I'm on a face, circle says I'm on a point. Again, more inferencing. And the inferencing works in conjuncture with the other inferencing. So axes inferencing will work with, with these point or geometry snaps too. See here, I'm pulling across here, I'm on the red axis, and when it gets to the point where my cursor is directly down the green axis from a, a potential snap point, like the midpoint there, it gives me a new snap point here. Move across here and I'm gonna eventually hit, there's that line, snap point. So if I draw a line here, I know that I'm, I'm along the green axis back to this one face. So it does take some getting used to, so you do have to play with a little bit. Another point, just one last point to throw in here, uh, snapping is, relative to your zoom. So um, I'm getting the similar snap points here that I would get if I was zoomed in, but it's harder for me to see them, and some of them are getting skipped over. Specifically, uh, say I wanna draw a line, my goal is to draw a line from here to the midpoint. If I zoom in like this, real easy to snap to. If I'm zoomed out like this, 
Um, eventually I'm going to get out so far that there we go, it skips over the midpoint, only goes to the ends. I point this out because a lot of new users do this kind of thing where they're like, well, I'm trying to draw a line here and if it's this far away, if you're far away, zoom in tighter and you'll get better, better definition on those snap points. Um, but yeah, that is the basics of inferencing inside of SketchUp. Inferencing is huge. There's a lot to inferencing. That's why I wanted to talk just about drawing lines and how inferencing uh, is, is implemented there. We'll come back next week and we'll get into even more inferencing. Maybe we'll talk about, uh, you know, face inferencing or, or drawing geometry, drawing shapes, polygons, arcs, that kind of thing. Uh, I figured just dipping our toe in the water with inferencing with line drawing was probably enough for week one. We'll come back and do some more though. Inferencing, like I said, is very important because inferencing is what sets SketchUp apart from all the other 3D drawing programs. Uh, with inferencing, once you get the hang of it, drawing detailed geometry, drawing very specific, accurate, perfect geometry is super easy. In fact, it's like, it's, it's an inferencing snap. If you liked that video and hated that pun, go ahead and like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week, including one of these Square One videos. You'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think of the videos we're creating, the content we're making. We like making these videos a lot. We'd like them even more when showing something you want to see. Thank you.